Hi everyone, welcome to Professor Orthodontics, your online classroom to understanding orthodontics in simpler terms. Today we learn about Nance Palata Arch. It's got many names. It's also called as Nance Palata Button, Nance Button, Nance Arch Holding Appliance, and so on. So let's get started. So what is Nance Palata Button? It is a bilateral arch holding appliance and as you can see in the picture it holds bilateral first permanent molar. Now this can be further modified and instead of placing the appliance with the support of first permanent molar you can place them more distally that is place them on the second permanent molar. But the original design was as, is, as you can see in this picture so bilateral first permanent molar is holding with the help of a band and anteriorly the wire is running and it's taking support on the anterior superior part of the hard palate. Now this particular area is used with the help of a acrylic button. The size of the acrylic button is as big as a coin maybe. It's not very huge. Now the point is that you are trying to take a support of a non-movable or an incompressible part of the palate. We know that the anterior superior hard, uh, part of a palate is hard palate and it has greater resistance to movement and hence it basically serves the function of the Nance palatal button. So main function is to prevent mesialization of the molars, first permanent molars. By doing this, you're doing two things. First, you are preventing loss of space a loss of arch length particularly useful in case of premature loss of deciduous molar secondly you're also reinforcing anchorage by increasing the anchorage value we have learned in the anchorage lecture that the greater the root surface area of the tooth the greater is the anchorage value of the tooth the greater the number of roots and uh, the length of roots and the type of worn all the sides the anchorage value of the teeth by doing this we are increasing the anchorage value we are enhancing the anchorage value of the maxillary first permanent molar bilaterally now the interesting fact is that the greater the acrylic button in diameter the greater will it be will its ability be to resist movement that is the greater will its anchorage be the anchorage ability be but the problem is that the more we do that the more we increase the diameter of this the acrylic button the higher will be the disadvantages of the appliance so the to uh, to overcome the possibility of other disadvantages we prefer to keep the diameter of the acrylic about one centimeter bilaterally so it should not be more than that and it should be along the midline and anterior superior part of the hard palate it can be as big as a coin okay now there are uses of this appliance now, of course the first use is uh, prevention of space loss so as a space maintainer it's primarily used and it was introduced for the first time by Hayes Nance in 1947 yes it's the same Hayes Nance who's also called as father of mixed dentition but natural this was given by him so that means that the primary use of this appliance was to preserve leeway space that is to prevent uh, loss of arch and space as a space maintainer that was a primary function but today many authors have come up with many modifications if you just go through every journal you'll find some or the other modification of Nance palatal arch and we'll discuss about a few of them at the end of this lecture let's get started and we already know that this applies were given by Hayes Nance and let me get the laser let me get the highlighter so we can see that bilaterally the first permanent molars are holding the Nance palatal button. We can also see that it's along the midline. The wire that is used over here is 036 inches. It's a stainless steel wire. Yes, it's a soldered appliance and you can have a Nance palatal button in bonded form, in banded form and soldered form. Like we discussed in Transpalatal Arch Lecture, it would be better to have a banded or a soldered appliance than having a bonded appliance. So even when it comes to Nance Palatal, the same holds true. Avoid using a bonded type of a Nance Palatal button because there is a risk of dislodgement of the appliance. The appliance can be bonded on the palatal surface of the maxillary molar or 
uh, the deciduous uh, molar depending on the situation but the problem is that the force of the tongue is too great and it's difficult to predict if your bond strength of uh, uh, an ants button on the palatal surface of the teeth is enough to resist that displacement there's a risk of dislodgement there is a risk of aspiration particularly in kids so it's better to go for a banded or a soldered or a welded type of a nance palatal button the advantage of having a solder or a welded type of nance palatal button is that it's more sturdy it is more firm and it will resist movement and displacement and hence serve its purpose now the disadvantage is that it will take one more appointment you'll have to you know there's lab work involved so you'll have to call the patient the next appointment and deliver the plans whereas as far as the uh, the banded type of uh, nance palatal button is concerned. You don't have that great uh, amount of lab work, uh, lab work to be done and it can be given um, relatively faster. Another advantage is that placement and removal of the appliance is easier. Just make sure you double ligate the appliance and we've already discussed in the TPA lecture how to double ligate it. And just to revise, we first take a um, greater diameter ligate of stainless steel wire and ligate it in the distal ends of the of the man's button um, or a TPA depends on what applies you're using. So over here, just with the help of a ligature, tie it. With the help of a ligature, tie it. I'm talking about the banded type of a man's palatal button, not the bond, another uh, band, not the solder type. This is a solder type, but I'm just uh, reminding you how we like it. And after that, we use after we are done with the stainless steel ligature and we have. Uh, holding the, uh, we are completely uh, engaged the ligature like wire on the motion sheet and the distal end of the appliance. We make sure just to, you know, doubly secure the appliance in the motion sheet with the help of an O ring. Again, engage them into the motion sheet. So we have not only the ligature like wire but also the uh, O ring uh, holding the appliance in place. So So what are the uses of the appliance? First use, obviously, it was given by Hayes Nance, so it has to be given as a space maintainer. It can be given as a space maintainer uh, during the mixed dentition stage in case of premature loss of deciduous teeth. So as far as other, other uses is concerned, you can use it as an anchorage reinforcement method. It can be used as a group B anchorage and um, do you remember who gave the group A, group B, group C classification of anchorage system? Yeah, any guesses? Yeah, it was given by Nanda. So according to Nanda, in cases where you can afford to lose 50% of extraction space and you only need the remaining 50% of extraction space to create the uh, to treat the crowding or to treat the procrastination, in such cases, the appliance can be given. It comes under Group B classification of anchorage requirement. It can also be given to uh, maintain arch expansion or contraction, which has been obtained so say you had uh, actively expanded the arch or actively contracted the arch unilateral or bilateral to maintain that correction to maintain that transverse correction it can be given what is the advantage of this appliance well this appliance is very clear it's very easy to fabricate it's a simple appliance it does not need any special equipment you just need the soldering uh, soldering set and the o36 wire and some amount of cold cure you can also use hot uh, a heat treated acrylic instead of using a cold cure acrylic you can also use light curing acrylic but uh, usually a cold cure acrylic is used because it's quicker and it's easier now uh, it's an inexpensive it's a cost effective appliance and it can be given in uh, in a uh, shorter duration of time you don't have to send them to any laboratory you can do it in your own clinic in your own setup what are the disadvantages well as i said the acrylic button increases the anchorage value of the appliance but then as you increase the diameter of that acrylic button more and more amount of surface area of the palette gets covered by the acrylic button hence greater and greater amount of surface area is not being cleansed by your saliva and your tongue so what happens is food debris starts getting accumulated underneath the acrylic button so the fine gap which exists between the acrylic button and the palatal tissue forms a capillary-like capillary 
zone and that capillary attracts saliva flow into it at the same time food debris gets accumulated and the, as the patient is not able to clean that area properly uh, you know bacterial growth takes place in that area patients end up with um, inflammation irritation inability to clean that area results in bacterial growth sometimes patients end up with ulceration of the palatal tissue also so that's the main disadvantage so that's the reason why although increasing the acrylic button will increase the uh, anchorage value of the appliance it is not done and just uh, um, uh, a bare minimum of one centimeter of diameter of acrylic button is used um, so maintaining oral hygiene becomes difficult because of that acrylic button and if that button is much greater in size and it's a crowded arch with arch line deficiency you may also end up with uh, blocked up canines so eruption of canine can also be affected if it's a crowded arch and if it's a bonded type of appliance there's a risk of dislodgement and hence aspiration so how to fabricate the plants? We already discussed the fabrication, so we'll just skip this part. Let's discuss the number of modifications that are present today. These are just some of the modifications. So over here we can see one modification uh, which was given in this journal. So this is after treatment, not during treatment. So this appliance is post-treatment. So what you can see is that, just a second, let me get the yeah. So what we see here is that during alignment and leveling state itself, uh, the authors have bonded a Beck's bracket on the palatal surface of the premolar over here. And there is an acrylic nodule which was added to the Nance palatal button. And yes, this is not a regular Nance palatal button because first of all, we have a bend which is placed this way within the arch wire oh sorry within the palatal wire also the palatal button is huge and it's extending it's quite vast and it's extending all the way to the palatal surface of the maxillary cingulum of the maxillary incisors now uh, you can see that it has it is basically modified to anterior plate so the nance palatal button can be modified into anterior palatal anterior bite plate and uh, along with the along with that another modification that is done is a palatal button is added unilaterally because pre-treatment this premolar was rotated that is the palatal surface of this premolar was mesially rotated and the buccal obviously was distally rotated so a button was added here and attached with an each end to this palatal button because the nance palatal button is a rigid appliance it was successfully able to use the coupling force so an e-chain was extended over here like this with the help of the button and um, from the buccal surface of the premolar an e-chain was extended all the way to the molar so this rotation was derotated and corrected with the help of the modified nance pattern okay now another modification is the wire nance appliance now the difference with the wire nance appliance and the regular uh, regular uh, nance pattern button appliance is that nance is made of a stainless steel wire whereas wire is made of a tma wire and instead of having a plain wire there are two helices in the sense say you have an acrylic button in the anterior okay this is not exactly an acrylic button Let's say you have an acrylic button in the anterior and you have molars bilaterally okay instead of having a straight wire extending this way we have a helix so the helix runs okay the helix runs like this similarly helix runs like this yeah so something like this so what we have is two helixes so we know that a helix will decrease the heaviness of the force and facilitate greater resilience we are incorporating longer length of fire so the force exerted is lighter more beneficial and the active force can be retained in the appliance the force does not die within the appliance quickly it slowly exerts the force so it can remain active for longer duration so you can recall the patient every one once a month or every one and a half months and you can activate the appliance so activation is done by opening the angle so bilaterally the angle is increased to 90 degree and then the appliance is placed and by doing this 
we are activating the appliance so quite of uh, quite a lot amount of force quite a lot amount of distillation can be exerted with the help of this i think at least 4 mm of space bilaterally can be achieved with the help of this appliance so not only are you holding the molar preventing the molar from mesializing you're actively distillizing the appliance or uh, distillizing the molar with the help of this appliance so in this picture we can see that this is a combination of trans bilateral button and enhance and it's also called as trans balance because it's a combination of both the anchorage holding appliance by doing this you're combining the moderate anchorage resistance of NANS and the moderate anchorage resistance of a TPA hence you're increasing the anchorage ability of both the appliances it does not give you absolute anchorage it doesn't give you group A anchorage really but it's better than group A anchorage so the resistance that you get with the help of this appliance is more than group B but slightly lesser than group A. So if you cannot give a patient a, uh, an implant for a anterior posterior resistance, you might as well give this appliance. Now we come to evidence. Now what, so what does scientific journals suggest when it comes to an anti button? Is it really useful? We'll get to know that now. Now this article was also mentioned by me in the last lecture. So uh, uh, the main takeaway of this article basically it was randomized control trial and in this study they compared the transparatal button that's a Koshkarian type of transparatal arch. They compared that with the non-spinatal button and they found that both of them more or less give the same amount of anchorage, more or less have the same amount of anchorage loss. The main advantage of a transparatal arch over a non-spinatal button was that it had the ability to provide more comfort. So the thing with nice spider button we have already discussed the main disadvantage is food debris accumulation underneath the surface of the palatal button and that causes ulceration inflammation and patient can end up with severe pain because of that so that was the main disadvantage so when it comes to tpa the area is more or less open it is self cleansing so patient does not have the discomfort so that's the only edge that tpa has over nice spider button it's more comfortable for the patient this was an interesting study. In this study, they compared different uh, space maintainers. They compared nanspalatal arch with transpalatal arch, and they also compared it with lingual arch. And they found that only 11% of nanspalatal arches failed. Most of them successfully completed their function as a space maintainer. Now, what was failure according to them? According to them, decementation or dislodgement of the appliance or breaking of the soldering segment of the appliance or uh, uh, preventing or blocking uh, the subsequent eruption of permanent teeth or even ulceration of uh, soft tissues was considered as failure of the appliance. Interestingly, in this study, they found that none of the non palatal buttons were uh, preventing teeth from erupting. And uh, one more interesting point they found was that it was the lingual arch in the mandible which was interfering with the eruption sequence of mandibular incisors. So that was one interesting takeaway from this article. It was a longitudinal study and they studied these appliances for over a period of 58 months and they found that 70% of the appliance survived and uh, the lingual arches on the other hand failed. Now this is another interesting study and this was done in animals. It was done in dog jaws and they found that none of the appliances uh, none of the nans palatal appliances had absolute anchorage which we already know but it is reinforcing what we what we know hence proving the point that nans palatal button cannot be given for absolute anchorage it can be given for moderate anchorage case and if you want to make it slightly better you can add it in combination you can use it in combination with other anchorage holding appliance so in this study what they did is they compared hands palatal buttons ability as an anchorage reinforcement method with another control group now the control group had no anchorage reinforcement in place that is nothing was used to reinforce anchorage Whereas in NANS palatal button, the NANS palatal button was used and they found that in case of a NANS, 28% of anchorage loss was found. Whereas in case of a non-anchorage reinforced control group, 45% of anchorage was lost. So um, basically it shows that something is better than nothing. So if you do not have any appliance available or you cannot 
have any appliance available at least place a NAND spalletter button so this is very similar to our finding in our previous lecture on transpalletter arch where we learned that if you cannot place anything at least place a transpalletal arch if you cannot place a tad if you cannot uh, you know, use headgear, at least place an anspalator arch or a transpalator button because something is better than nothing. So the anchorage loss was decreased by almost half with the help of an button. We can see that only 28% of anchorage was lost. But then, of course, 28% is not good enough. So if it's a critical anchorage case or a group A anchorage case, I would suggest do not, in fact, I would strongly say don't use a NANS or a T. Now, these, this study, uh, Nance palatal arch, a cautionary tale. It was not a study exactly, but it was a case, a case report. Similarly, even this one, uh, this article was interesting. Now I'm trying to uh, bring this in, um, uh, bring this uh, slide over here in into this discussion is that there are only a few cases where um, it's been reported that Nance palatal pattern causes major issues with patient safety and patient com discom patient comfort so in one study they found one case report they found that the patient was having hematemesis in another there was severe like in the previous article there was severe palatal bone loss and even the palatal uh, root of the maxillary teeth was being resolved due to the inflammation and ulceration which was excessive in that particular patient's case so every patient is different we know that already so we do not know which patient reacts a different way we don't know uh, you know maybe your next patient turns out to be one of those so yes one in thousand patient may end up with a palatal bone loss one in thousand patient may end up with hematemesis due to the ulceration extreme ulceration caused by man's palatal button but just to make sure your patient is not one of them it's very important that you recall the patient every month and check if your palatal button is fine and it's not causing any problem so to conclude when it comes to Nance palatal button yes it is a very simple appliance it's a cost effective appliance it doesn't take a lot to fabricate the appliance but then yeah there is a, a few there are a few disadvantages so in moderate anchorage case and space maintainer cases definitely you can give the appliance no problem at all but not in a group a or a critical anchorage case not advocated but then again what about the disadvantages we know that the dislodgement of the appliance can simply be prevented by double ligating the appliance in place and by not using a bonded type of a nance instead of going for a soldered or a welded or a banded type of a nance as far as ulceration and the food debris accumulation is concerned you have many ways of handling that situation first of all ask the patient to not only brush his teeth and his uh, clean his tongue but also to clean the polished surface of the nance palatal button with the same brush because plaque and debris gets accumulated gets calcified on that surface and increases bacterial accumulation so as far as the palatal surface of the nance palatal button is concerned which is pressed against the palatal palatal tissue ask the patient to use a chlorhexidine mouth rinse you can ask the patient to use a syringe to irrigate under the surface of the under the palatal surface of the acrylic button so that it flushes out all the debris if the patient if the patient can afford he can be advised to use a water pick instead we know that water pick can help reach all those crevices and nooks and corners which cannot be easily accessed with a, a regular uh, brushing and rinsing techniques so by doing this you are you know the patient is doing his bit of maintaining his oral hygiene in that inaccessible area Another thing what you can do as a clinician is that instead of using a soldered or a welded type of a nice pattern button, you can use a banded type of a nice pattern button. So every time the patient comes for a checkup, you can remove the appliance, ask the, appliance, ask the patient to rinse his mouth, check if there is any ulceration, any sign of ulceration developing in that surface. And once you're done with the checking and the patient is done with rinsing, you may place the appliance back in place. Thank you for staying till the end. I know that it was uh, quite a long lecture and I hope to decrease the duration of each presentation. I know my lectures are going slightly 30 minutes and above. And if you like this lecture and you learned a thing or two, please like, share and subscribe. If you did not like the lecture, on the other hand, go ahead and click the dislike button. So until next time.